Have you ever spent time with an old friend and you've just sat there kind of thinking, hmm, is this what it used to be like? Is this the right friendship for us? Do we really get along anymore? Well, I have. Um, and I do have that thought sometimes with if some friends, not many, but it does is it is a thought sometimes that crosses my mind. And I want to discuss that more today. And I would kind of I would call this pod growing up, growing apart, and letting go. So we're gonna explore those three areas today um, in more detail. Before I start on those topics, I had two thoughts today. One, I have like the worst spatial awareness, which I know this is a thought I have like I reckon weekly. Terrible spatial awareness. Like I will see something, literally I'll see a corner and I'll walk into it. Even like, even though I feel like, yep, you've clocked a corner, give yourself space. No, she walks into it. But it's weird because I have, I'm like quite, quite good at sport. So I don't really know why I have such bad spatial awareness when I just like walk casually around the home. Strange, very strange. Um, two, uh, this week, yeah, I think I've really validated that I'm not great at saying no, especially to certain people like partners. Um, but let's discuss that in another pod because I think it's a very juicy conversation and it would be good to like work through. So going back to friendships, I think um, this topic about growing up, growing apart and letting go really it has to do with like older friends that you have, um, but just friends that you collect over time. And I think the longer the friendship you have, the more you are less likely to let go of certain friendships sometimes because of the history. So I was thinking like, I think that the good place to start is like, oh, why do we keep these sort of friendships around where you, know, you have your old friends? I think the obvious one is nostalgia um, and this like the heritage of the friendship. I think another one for me is loyalty. Like, do you think, you know, if I've been friends with you for so long, we've been through a considerable amount together and there's like an element of loyalty towards each other that, you know, you've proven to each other that you are reliable, that you're someone that, that someone can count on. Not always, but um, generally there's like a sense of loyalty to maintain that friendship. And then I think when you have like a really old friendship, then there is like some unspeakable like bond. Yeah. That's just kind of like not, um, not. there's no explanation to it. Um, and yeah, these are like the, the old friendships, but I do think there are times where I sit back and I have these, some of these old friendships and I do think, hmm, you know, these, some, sometimes these people do like questionable things or things that don't really align with my um, values. Or sometimes I just cut, get, I guess I get caught off guard where I don't really notice those things about somebody anymore. Um, like I have a particular friend where I know like we were in an environment where a lot of other new people that I knew were like engaging with this person and they were like, how are you friends with this person? Like they're so toxic. They're like the opposite to you. I don't get how you guys are friends. And when they shared that with me, I was like, oh, actually I don't really know why. Like I, I, I was, my excuse was just like, oh, but we've been friends for ages and, um, it made me realize that I do think you give older friends a m greater benefit of the doubt and a lot more, you're a lot more lenient with them. Like I was like, oh, well, yeah, I know she has like these sort of qualities, but she never really done it to me. So, um, you know, I guess in my, in my view, I guess I sweep it under the rug, which is not the best thing. And so it's, I guess it's like a question of like, you know, at what point do you start to hold those friends more accountable because I do think if I met somebody nowadays that was like that friend would I tolerate them would I keep them in my circle would I give them the time of day and maybe not and that's I feel like that's where I kind of get myself caught and I feel a little bit like I'm being a bit um contradictory in like how I operate and so I am very much so guilty of being a way more forgiving and patient with friends I've known for longer just because I have known them for longer. And I don't think that's necessarily necessarily right. But at the same time, I do think friendships are something where it's like, well, it's like a relationship, right? It's like, yeah, there's a logical part of your brain that's like, yep, you should, that's like not right. And, you know, you shouldn't accept X, Y, Z. But at the same time, you, 
you have this level of empathy and emotional side of you that is not so rational and thinks about like all the memories and you know the connection you have with someone xyz um so i think like for me when i think about that i think it's the ability to have the difficult conversation with that friend when they're doing something or when you've done something that isn't really like aligned to each other's beliefs and i mean you know friendship not you can't control other people and like everyone is always going to do what they want to do but there is an and, and, I, and when I said, I mean, like, you know, we kind of, I kind of am like ratherly, rather, I'm not too judgmental in the sense, like, if you want to do that, I'm like, you do you, that's good for you. But there is, a, like, there are things that, you know, cross the line where it's like, oh, that's just pushing it. That's not aligned to my beliefs. And I think when you, you see things like that or you see behaviors of people that are not okay or not right and you don't believe that's like how they should treat people, you should definitely call them out. And I think those conversations are super hard to have because it's confrontation, right? Um, whether you approach it in a nice way or not, it is a confrontation. And I think the difficulty with that conversation is you think about, oh, like, what if they respond badly? Will this cause, like, you know, a bad mark on the relationship? Will that be the end of, like, all of that history that we have? But I think the short answer to that is, like, if you guys can't have real conversations and you can't share feedback about each other and see how like you're trying to improve each other or have a discussion about something and disagree then what's the point of that friendship like you're just living in a this idealistic this idealized version of a friendship that isn't really authentic at least for me that's what i think um and i think um it goes to my this is like kind of like trickles onto my next point which is about growing apart and so I think there are a lot, a lot of different reasons why people grow apart and what recent reasons I've grown apart from people sometimes I think back to people like I used to hang out with when I was early 20s and I'm like actually we got along really well I don't really know specifically why we stopped hanging out but we kind of just grew apart and we I think we all just kind of were like yep except that's fine I don't really don't really feel like we need to fight for this friendship. We're both kind of on mutual grounds with that. And there's no bad blood, but it's just like you drift and you just move on with your lives and you get into different things. And I think often it's, you know, occasions that happen in life, like someone gets a boyfriend or a girlfriend, um, then they, you know, sometimes you lose people in that situation as they get really um, involved in that. Or it might be that somebody gets into, you know, working, like their career and you're still in university is just different priorities and I think a lot of it comes down to priorities a big one for me was obviously moving overseas and um, I think that's when I really started to um, disconnect with certain people and really be clear on like what who my circle was and my close friends and I've always held a very close circle of friends like it's very it's been the same people for a really long time and there's a reason for that. It's because they're all real, relatively like very chill people, easy to like maintain a friendship with. I think we all have like a very mutual respect for each other and our lives. We are always there to cheer each other on in the big moments and the small and, and, and there to talk when, you know, things aren't going so well. But I think that's what helps like relationships and friendships go the distance. And where I've seen it not, and where I see friendships really struggle is when people essentially lose interest, you know, in each other's lives or with, there's this like um, expectation from one person that, you know, some people want pe friends to be there all the time and like texting all the time. And there are friends I used to text all the time, but like, as you get older, you just don't have time. Your priorities change, as I said before. And so I think people can have a tendency to lose interest based on how they want to nurture friendships. Like some people want, oh, if I don't see you, if I don't hear from you, if we don't talk, then you're not, we're not close anymore. I think also sometimes like small things add up. It's like, oh, you missed my birthday that year. You, you didn't, you know, congratulate me on that thing or you didn't reach out to me in that moment. Those are the small things that add up. I think that make friendships struggle during distance. And I think with that, the key thing is being, I think you have to have a level of 
um, forgiveness that the fact that people are living their own lives, which I think is a pretty lame excuse. I think I pretty much remember like all of my friends' birthdays um, and will always be there to like wish them and, and, and there for those moments and ask questions. But not everybody is like that. And I think you have to have a level of um, acceptance that not everyone is like that. And people show love to each other and different people in different ways. Um, and so I think when you kind of not be petty, but let those small things add up, then that can also create a distance. And also in the same tune of saying that, I do think also like power to you if you want to hold your friends to that standard where like, if you miss X, Y, Z, like, no, then, you know, that's a detractor of that person. And that's okay because that's your standard of friendship. That's what you want. And you should like willingly, like you should ask for that, but you should do it within reason is what I think. Um, a thing I, I feel a lot is, especially when you live overseas and I've moved quite a bit, I do think when you go home sometimes and you meet up with friends, it's so hard to sit there and tell them like everything that's happened and the experiences that you've had in such a short amount of time. You know what I mean? I think that's why you go close, you go close and you have a very different friendship with friends that you meet overseas and you experience things with because they're there with you in those everyday moments. But likewise, I think, you know, if you were to take your friend from overseas back home with you and surround them around your like childhood friends, all those, you know, memories and nostalgic moments that you have with your friends at home, your friend that you live with in the same country can't relate, right? So it's all it's all relative and I think it all it all fits together but I do think as you get older for me at least in my formative years um being overseas I was having a lot of like adult moments like realizations um moments that really shaped me into a woman and, and really made me grow up that friends at home may not fully understand and it's really hard for me to sit there and explain it to them without feeling like I'm going to bore them with like my whole story but um yeah I think that's a that's a thing that I think my friendships can sometimes struggle with or be vulnerable towards so I think I've had to like really take the time to you know share things throughout and I think what helps with them for me is that I do have a social media presence like like exclude the followers but like I do post online I do share what like I'm doing I do share what I'm going through I think it helped that I had a YouTube channel that I was really active on at one point because um people could see what I was getting up to and connect with like my life and kind of see a glimpse into that but you know for a, a person who doesn't create content that is really really hard to like converse and share and get people to relate to so I think, in my opinion, I think that's the biggest thing that impacts friendships is just that distance and having different experiences. Even for people who, like, maybe you live in Melbourne and you live in Sydney, like, that space, that distance enough and those experiences that you have being in a different bubble, being able to be a different person is enough to make a friendship kind of, you know, fleet, be a fleeting friendship. Um, so... I do think when you are growing, you are in this phase of growing apart and you're all doing self-discovery. I think in my life, I've had a lot of great friendships and still to this day, I have lots of friendships that have always lasted. I mean, my one of my longest friends is my friend from primary school. Um, she was my bestie from primary school. And we have kept in touch since we were literally, what, like nine? which is wild and you know we went to different high schools after primary school we went to different universities like we've led very different lives but we have mutually always put in the effort into this friendship to maintain it and I think that's what really goes a really long way I think that's a perfect friendship as an example of you know you don't you don't hang your hat on the small things of where like oh right she doesn't text me like every day or like oh she might miss this moment and that moment but it's fine like I 100% value that friendship so much that you know we're there for the big moments like we both got engaged we're both planning our weddings we um I know what's I catch up with her enough to you know every time I come home to really talk about life and hear and listen to what's been happening and I think that's um like another thing I wanted to say before was I think when you live overseas or you're having a different life experience to your friends vice versa the thing to that can really cripple a friendship is like thinking that your life is so much more interesting than the other person. 
and losing that mutual respect for somebody else's life, I think is the most harmful thing you can do because it just creates this dynamic of like, oh, you're not interested unless like my, my stories are as good as yours, you know? And for me, I think I've always tried to sit back and really listen and appreciate what my friends are going through. I have friends doing all sorts of things, being doctors, you know, psychologists, accountants, you know, and like some of them live in Melbourne, some of them don't live in Melbourne. But I love to hear about their journeys because for me, I think fundamentally, I just really care about them, their lives, their journey and what they're doing. And no matter what they do, I'm interested in, in, in that, and not just because of what like I do. It doesn't have to be the same. So I think that as you grow apart, that's what something you really need to remember is that you will all diverge into such different pathways and lives. You'll all make such different choices. But if you can maintain this level of respect for each other, where you give each other the time and you care for that person fully, then the, that friendship I truly believe will last. Um, sometimes I do look at older people, like my parents, who I don't think necessarily have that many friends. They've kept some friends that they've had for a really long time, but it's a very small circle. Um, and then I see like other people of different ages who are like, have so many friends. And sometimes I wonder like what it is at a point in life, like when do you, when do you start growing apart? I often think like, I always sit in like this time in my 20s and I do think about, I couldn't imagine not being like friends with my best friend, but you know, I, I always remind myself like things could happen. I, I could, the, in the same way I could actually really see how that could end up happening, which I hope it never does. But I guess it's a reality you have to accept, like you will get your own priorities. And I think the main thing is like, if you have a family, if you, if you have kids, once you get married, I do think your priorities really start to change um, as your parents get older, as you know, different things happen within your family. Um, your fundamental priorities change. And I think that's when maybe things start to drop off and you, you can't make it, make it to that thing. You can't make it to that thing. You don't get to go home that time. You don't get to see that friend then I think that's really when you start to grow apart and like lose that connection with people. And I think that is a really hard thing to control, right? Because at some point something's got to give. You can't, can't be there for everyone. You can't be everyone, can't be everything for everyone, unfortunately. So I think that when I, when I look at it, um, and I think, and I sit back and I think about what I've said and think about my friendships. I think there are some friendships where I'm like not sure about like when is the right time to let go. Um, I had a recent interaction with a friend where, yeah, I mean like we have really nostalgic moments. They were like really fun. We always laugh about them. But like hanging out with that person nowadays, I just don't think we align that much in our interests and values i think the way that you know we both behave in different ways i don't i i feel a real gap in in how much i've grown and changed as a person versus my friend and not that i feel like she not that i feel like they should be you know where i'm at but i do feel like there hasn't really been an evolution of the person in any way which starts to make it hard to have conversations with that person because we they're not as receptive to like certain conversations or topics or just being able to listen um and i also think just interests are really different so yeah there's a friendship i am considering like hmm is it time to let go um i don't know what point i will decide when is the right time to let go i wonder if it's maybe just generally easier in life to let things fizzle um and then there's like the natural closure. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't really feel like it's necessary to really like cut ties and let go of that person. I think I'll just let it float, run its course and see what happens. I won't keep you updated on that, but I will keep myself updated in, internally. Um, so yeah, I think growing up, growing apart and letting go, when do you know? 
I think when you're, you don't really see eye to eye anymore in certain things, if something actually, you know, happens where you have a confrontation and you guys can't really work through that. I think if you're not able to be authentic with that person, um, and yeah, I think if you just get a general sense of the person not caring anymore, that's a pretty good sign to let go because I don't believe also in putting your effort um, and energy into someone or something that is not reciprocating because that's just only going to hurt you more in the long run. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this pod. Give me your thoughts. You know, have, have there been friendships where you guys have decided, oh, it's time to let go and you've done that? How did you do that? Why did you do that? Um, and yeah, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks guys. Bye.